Hey, Internet! It's Paul. It's Matt. The Dork Lords. We are here talking about the new Netflix show, Altered Carbon. Mm. By popular request, some of our subscribers have said, do it. Yeah, so we're was like two doing it. People? Two. Some. <laughs> that says some, right? <laughs> yes. Popular. Popular. <laughs> um, Just like I show. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly as popular. All right, so Altered Carbon, a uh, sci fi show, Netflix, uh, first season. Episode one is called Out of the Past. I have seen episode one. You have seen the whole series. I've seen the whole series. So you are omniscient. You are the omniscient oh. observer. I um, just, I don't know, haven't uh, sat, haven't binged. So, all right. Uh, let's talk about this. Episode one, sci-fi series based on a book. I have not read that book. No, or it's a series of books, yeah. whatever, but it's a, anyway. So, yeah. Um, but you, the viewer, might have read that. And yeah, are like, oh, can, I wonder if it's the same as the book. I don't know. Maybe. Down, yeah, let us know. Um, so we've got a our protagonist. Uh, it goes by Kovach. Although we would also learned he had other names. I think he oh, mentioned well. like at one point he says like I used to be called Ice Pick. I think yeah, well, yeah. I mean those type of names is like oh, oh those, those are just like, like nicknames. Yeah, I think okay. so. Yeah, like right. the, I think one of those like Bringer of Death or something. Somebody used to call me Lifty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <laughs> Butterhands. Takashi Kovacs uh, right. is his name. Yes. So uh, we start with he is floating in water uh, and he's dreaming, mm. and the dreams he's oh, that's what I get out of it anyway. The dreams he's having are of his uh, immediate past to him. Um, and he and his partner um, are uh, attacked by a big group, a death squad, basically. And in the ensuing fight, uh, the partner, uh, the female partner, is killed. As is uh, uh, Kovac. Well, well, right. In a in a manner of speaking, yes. his body is shot many yep, times. Yep, yep, yep. And you think normally that it would kill someone? That would kill a guy. Oh, uh, they had sex in a shower before that. You're right. Uh, it's so very they, important. So the partner, it was a. There's a lot of sex and violence in this. They're like, look, this is not a network show. No, this will never be on NBC. Never. It's on Netflix. That's right. So it, it is. I would say a hard R. Yes. It is. There's no PG thirteening yes, no, about there this. There is full frontal male nudity. And 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 yeah, violence of a type that well, like, violence could probably fit. On yeah, that. violence fits. Yeah, Who cares about people that? getting but shot in the head. There's nudity. Nudity. Okay. <laughs> so, um, uh, yeah, he dies and then uh, wakes up, and we have this whole waking up process where there are these doctors and they have this bag and it's just like goop that he's been sealed in, and he wakes up from the goop. And uh, immediately attacks the doctors. And they're like, "Oh God, we need help! Oh, this is all—I broke my nose." Um, what we learn fairly quickly in there is that uh, Kovac um, has been brought back in another body, what they call a sleeve. So, in this particular world or universe, um, human bodies are basically just vessels. That you can just pass your consciousness around in. Yeah. When you're a baby, they put a little chip in your in your neck in your by your head there. They call it a stack. St it stores all your information about your, you know your brain thoughts and all that, your memories. DHF, human freight, something like that. Just, I forgot what the first word is. Diesel. No, um, <laughs> they run on diesel power for the no um, digital human freight. I'll say uh, maybe. Um, but so these stacks, they put them in when, uh, yeah, you said one years old, I think. So if you're killed off when you're six months old, <laughs> that's tough. Damn it. Um, but yeah, so, uh, we learned that Kovac, uh, was a thing called an envoy that very rare nowadays, but basically, I'm, you could, you probably know this much more than I do, but, uh, it seems like they're kind of like a warrior monk kind of guy, you know, hey, we're... We grow up in a society that teaches us to be assassins and really awesome at things, but also, I don't know, just they're, they know and can do a lot. They're Jedi. We are the last of the Jedi. Um, so they're very capable fighters, um, and they are used, uh, you know, for these kind of either protection missions or uh, assassination missions or whatever, but they're, they're very capable. And so someone... As we learned, this guy, Lawrence Bancroft, an incredibly rich guy, has purchased uh, a uh, sleeve. 
purchased uh, a sleeve to put Kovacs's stack in. Yes. And uh, st- he was, even though he was dead, <laughs> he was also imprisoned. <laughs> I was like, we shoot you and kill you first. Let's, then let's, we put you in prison yeah, for 250 let's put years. put the stack in a prison. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess that's the thing. Make sure it doesn't escape. <laughs> I assume, because uh, we see him dreaming, that then he feels the the full length of time. Otherwise... Uh, he asked how long he was out. He did. So, yeah. So what is the, what's the downside to being in prison for 250 years if you're just like... you If, you're, if there's no passage of time... Just like, doop, doop, and you're back. It's like, oh, well, that was easy. Right, well, you know, um, how many people, are, rich people are going to buy you out of prison? <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> so, um, you know? so he is brought back to, uh, by this, this rich guy. And so he is um, taken to uh, this guy's house. He lives up in the clouds. That's where all the richest people live. They're called meths or mets. I can't remember. But it's, it's Methuselah is the... Slang term. Invisible People that live a really, really long time Lanks. because they can afford to. The Yanks and the Mets. Uh, the, oh, uh, no, man. Meths. I think it's Meths. Maybe, yeah, like but. you're like, oh, they... Yeah, exactly. Like, wait. Do they live in a trailer? Like nice teams, buddy. The, <laughs> somewhere in suburbia? <laughs> no, all right. So, um, off, lives off in a palace in the clouds, kind of away from the riffraff, where it's sunny. Down below, it's kind of rain. If you like Blade Runner, you're going to like this show. It's very Philip K. Dick, especially Blade Runner-y, methinks. Right. It's kind of a dystopian future that looks very similar. You know, the dark neon lights everywhere. Kind of a seedy culture. Um, and it involves replicants. It's kind of, I don't know. Well, conscious. That's, yeah, you're right. It, 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 it questions the nature of what is a human. There I you suppose. go. How about that? Yeah. Um, so... Um, our sleeve, uh, Kovac, uh, shows up. He is, um, he has a taxi driver that is actually a, or chauffeur, I should say, that's actually a cop. Yep. Who is pretending to chauffeur him and question him while she goes. Does it do it very subtly? So no. I guess she realizes, I've got like 10 minutes, I might as well just start asking questions. So she's trying to figure out who he is yep. and why this rich guy has purchased him. Yeah, he, and he tells her he obliges. That's, he tells her his name. Tells her, she looks it up. Yeah. She's like, "Oh, this guy." He, okay, a, no, Oops. not that she knows him, but she's right. like, "Well, this guy is a terrorist." Yeah, and uh, why? You know, oh, he's going to cause problems. Yep. Uh, she also is very bad at landing cars. We yes. find that she pretty much like <laughs> screws up the guy's lawn. And you're like, "Oh." Um, so we meet uh, Lawrence Bancroft's wife. Yep, and. His son. His son, as well. He uh, was supposed to pick him up, but uh, didn't. Right. Uh, got arrested. Because he got arrested, yes. Yeah. He's uh, kind of a fuck-up. Uh, that. So, um, Lawrence is uh, played by, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, James Purifoy. He's, I just know him from uh, the HBO show Rome. He played Mark Antony. Was great in that show. That show was really good. This isn't about Rome. No. Um, it was also in the really ultra-violent medieval, uh, uh, ironclad. It was like, whoo! Dude, cut in half vertically. <laughs> like, oh, we didn't need to see that. All right, anyway. Um, but he's a very good actor. I like him, and I like when him in this whole. role. When he's whole. When he's not cutting. I don't know that he was the cut-in-half guy, but I think he was doing the cutting. <laughs> oh, okay. but yeah. Um, so, uh, he has brought Kovach back... Uh, theoretically, uh, at least as far as we know in the first episode. The, the whole point is, I was killed. I don't know why. I want you to solve my murder. Right. Of course, I'm not dead, because my stack is uh, was uh, backed up. Yeah. Uh, so somebody blew up his stack, like sh- vaporized his head. Yes. But because he is uber, 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 uh, incalculably wealthy, he's got a satellite that backs up his uh, soul, his personality, who he is, every 48 hours. Right, and he uh, it occurred before he could be backed up. That's why he doesn't know what happened. If right, he, so he's he, lo- he lost two days. Essentially, this inconvenience cost him two days. And if so, hence, the idea is whoever did it knew, oh, I should do this at the end of that two-day period, that way I won't get caught. Is, is kind of what I got out of that, but okay. There, actually, the going, 
the conventional wisdom among the characters is that maybe he just committed suicide. I don't think that's a thing. But anyway, uh, he could have just, and uh, they don't know why he would have done that. Well, he, he, he doesn't feel, he's like, confident. if I would have done it, I would have killed myself off. Yeah, he's, he's confident that he did not do it. He was like, this, I would never do anything like that. Right, and if I did, I wouldn't be able to be brought back. <laughs> that's kind of his, his thought. Although I would say that maybe that would give a chance to alter his programming up in the satellite, maybe. I don't know. But, so that when he gets downloaded again, he gets there's some new piece of information that he has that he didn't have before. Uh, I, that's a, obviously, I'm wrong. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so this is cool. I can theorize yeah. and then see <laughs> Paul's face and then go, nope, nope, <laughs> that's not it at all. So move away from that. All right. So, um, so Kovac... Uh, at first says, nope, I'm not taking this. Uh, you, you get the idea that Kovac, 250 years ago on another planet, was basically fighting against the elites um, and was leading, or perhaps, I don't know, leading, was part of a revolution. He mentions the Falconer. Was sounds like somebody, there's a voice in his head that's this woman called the Falconer that is either a partner or maybe his, maybe the person that was, leading this revolution um so it kind of makes sense that if this elitist person comes and says help me he's gonna be like yeah that's not really what i do uh so no so he would rather just go back to oblivion put my stack back in a that's right i'll just sleep forever yeah but but so he's got uh, uh bancroft gives him a day yep. like think about it spend the day you know living <laughs> and uh maybe come back tomorrow and give me your answer so basically, uh, to, uh, Kovac is like, I'm just going to spend my last night and go debauchery, basically. So he goes and buys a bunch of drugs, they put him in eye drops. Uh, he's getting prostitutes, whatever. He's going to go and just, yes. blah. Yeah. He is, uh, also they show, something that's interesting is, as he's walking through this black market area, there are these virtual reality ads hmm. that show up. So they're not real to anyone. No one else can see them, but they're specifically tailored for you, the, the viewer, I guess. And so like, he thinks he's in a fight with some folks, but he's, uh, uh, he's not. No. But he also sees a virtual reality ad for a hotel called The Raven. Yes. Um, which uh, becomes important later because he decides to go there. Yes. Um, and but in the meantime, Ortega, the cop, finds him. She's been tracking him, I guess, like tailing him because she's worried that he's going to do something horrible. Um, and I think she has a grudge against Bancroft. I, you know, like when she crash lands on there, they they know each other in some way, and I think they've had a past maybe or something. They've expressed at least uh, in that episode, he was saying that she was involved with the, with that case. Um, and I think he was not happy with uh, her supposition, as well as others, that he killed himself. Ah. So, yeah. um, she, at least for that reason anyway, is certainly not getting along with him. Yeah. Him being Bancroft. Yes. And by connection, Kovac or something. Uh, so, she, um, she, they go to a strip club together. Yes. Um, <laughs> which, a little pet peeve of mine, I'm... I'm getting a little weary of the like cop shows where cops just hang out and have talk to people at strip clubs. That seems to be a thing. It's just like a recurring theme. Like, oh, how can we bring in some you know scantily clad or non unclad females, but do it in a way where we can still have the guys talking about the plot? But then, oh, look. Anyway, so uh, they did that. So be it. Uh, although interestingly, yeah, all the cops who watch our show, please let us know how. <laughs> Freak, how accurate that is. Yeah. How infrequently you actually go to strip shop. <laughs> uh, to talk shop. Uh, but yeah, okay, so... Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, if you just do it, you know, we never talk shop when we're in a strip club. <laughs> no, no, no. We'd so, like to hear that too. So the, the perhaps the most interesting thing about that scene is that the one stripper like completely changes... Her body. Her body yeah. based on... Uh, reading co watch? I don't think so. She's like, Do you like this? I think body? Just Let's turn you on better. Just chose another one. Just, okay. I think just she didn't like go do 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 downloading. Okay. Yeah, like I can tell by your distance to your retinas that you like yeah. this type of woman. Okay. <laughs> that, that was not a thing, in other words. It was just, so. I can change, change it to someone else. So it's like, boop, immediately someone else, which 
So does that mean she's a hologram? Good question. Okay, you know the answer to that. You're just not saying. Um, I'm no, I'm not certain of the answer. Okay, all right. At all. I mean, she, I would think she's not a human. Based like, on later you know, episodes, not a sleeve, in other words. Right. Based on later episodes, she may be a synth. Okay. Um, so uh, Ortega talks with Kovac at the bar. Uh, I'm trying to think if there was some. I mean, there's we get more world building there, and but I don't I don't remember a whole lot other than that's where he says people know me as Ice Pick. Yeah, that's the yes, one I remember. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's trying to get Donkey more information Kong. on, but doing it, he's telling her that he's not interested in uh, doing it, um, and he speaks about oh, right. his mythical abilities. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and she's surprised that he's not going to take the take on this well, job. Why not? He's going to get all kinds of cash. He's getting all these privileges. He's out of, out of jail. Yeah. You know, why not? And he's like, yeah, nah, let's go back. Yeah. Um, well, he certainly doesn't, you know, he expresses how he doesn't really think highly of, of the world in which he's in. Right. Um, and, you know, what's what's generally known is, is the revolutionary nature of his group. Um, you know, but that's a long time ago. And there's none left. Uh, so he then goes to this hotel. Uh, she warns him against going to the Raven Hotel. She's like, yes. "Oh, it's one of those AI hotels that nobody goes to anymore. Nobody goes to them uh, because it's it's like going to a stalker. Like yeah. they basically figure out your personality and then give you everything that it, they think you need. I guess. Yeah, who wants that? Yeah, it sounds horrible. <laughs> no, okay, so um, uh, he goes, and sure enough, he walks into the Raven. It is a, I don't want to say it's an Edgar Allan Poe-themed hotel, but it kind is. of it is, basically. It's yeah, called the Raven, yeah, yeah. and Poe is the synth hologram, whatever, not actual person, no. that uh, is the uh, person behind the desk. Proprietor. Your, your proprietor, manager guy. Yeah. So. Owner. Um... Before the purchase can be made, he's like, sure, I'll take a room for the night. Before he can, like, click on the thing saying yes, a group of uh, another hit squad shows up. Uh, I say another, uh, 250 years ago. We had oh, another. yes, that's true. There was a different hit squad. <laughs> so so right. 250, 250 years later, years later another, another hit squad. squad. All right. So they show up, big group. Uh, it is led by the guy who was in, actually, there's, there's two dollhouse. I don't know if you if you know the show Dollhouse. It was a Joss Whedon sci-fi show that lasted two seasons. And uh, anyway, this guy was on it. He's also on Battlestar Galactica. Yes, he plays uh, leader of Death Squad. Uh, we don't know who paid him off. What he's a mercenary basically. Shows up. He's like, oh, I didn't. I guess I didn't need all these guys. You look, you look easy enough to take down. Okay, famous last words. But um, uh, he's. The, the, basically, Kovac is in trouble. He's getting, you know, he's he's getting beat up, whatever. And then he gets pushed against the counter, and he hits the button with like a couple seconds left to make his purchase. And as soon as he makes the purchase, he gets all the amenities, which includes like sh- turrets, guns coming out of the ceiling, wastes everyone. Uh, Poe himself has a shotgun, and he's shooting people, lays waste to all the bad guys. Including uh, our, our Battlestar Galactica guy, who we find out Ortega shows up. It's like, oh my god, big crime scene! Well, oh, you got into trouble again. Mm-hmm. Um, but we find out that this guy, this uh, this hitman, I, I, he probably got a name, and I can't think of his name. But he's a he, he put himself into twin sleeves. So, yeah. in other words, people who there were two bodies that were twins. I think and, what they actually meant because I feel like it's two different actors playing the part oh. is that he copied himself and put himself into another sleeve. Oh, okay. So the, sl- the physical form isn't the same. I don't feel as if it is. It's just his consciousness is the same. Yeah. Okay. So he's this particular... Which is illegal. You're not ah. supposed to do that. Okay. Um, so after that fight, that, that kind of gives Kovac just thought of like, well, somebody wants to be dead because of this. So somebody has an interest in this guy. Probably didn't kill himself. Uh, and then he also has a he here uh, he has a, a imaginary he, he they say he's gonna have a hallucinations after waking up maybe that's what this is I don't know but he has a hallucinatory meeting with his sister mm-hmm. who we we meet who's also from Dollhouse 
yes. the show. Um, it's a very brief interaction, but she's like, hey, brother. Um, you know, I don't know. She gives him words of encouragement, basically, I think. I can't remember what she was saying. I don't remember what she said. But um, he then hears the voice of the falconer, the this either a leader or partner of his from the past, who says that he needs to finish the mission. And based on the fact that this case seems a little more interesting than it might have been, and the fact that the this voice is telling him to pursue this, he decides to accept Bancroft's offer and try to solve Bancroft's murder, and that's where we see the credits. All right, so that, <laughs> that's the fast description. Of this. <laughs> yeah. uh, only took twenty minutes. Okay, so um, episode one. Couple of thoughts there, sir. What are your What are your initial thoughts? So um, I was probably interested enough in the first episode to continue watching. Um, now I've seen them all, and I'm I'm really happy with with uh, my watching of the whole series. Uh, one of the things that um, I felt was interesting about the series is how quickly it relied heavily on the uh, detective noir trope. So the whole thing about I've got to get somebody to investigate a murder is, of course, a really old, um, you know, genre. Um, and this one, you could say primarily is that. I mean, certainly Blade Runner is that too. Um, you know, the type of world that uh, the two... Um, Alder Carbon and, and Blade Runner are different, but the elements they share the same are obviously visual and the whole idea about, you know, what's the future like. Um, so I liked that aspect of it in terms of, uh, you know, the detective, or in this case, um, this past warrior uh, who, you know, is going to solve a crime. But I like how inventive it is. So it's really combining a lot of different um, genres in there. So, you know, the fact that uh, Takashi is a, uh, a Japanese person and a lot of people are upset, well, I shouldn't say upset, it has been criticized perhaps not too heavily for the whole whitewashing thing. Um, I believe in the original work also as well, it was someone who, an Asian person was put into a white person's body and he, w he was like, Arr! he didn't like you know, that he was in it, so it's not, that theme isn't playing so strongly here, but that's from the original work. But anyway, I like all the, you know, interesting sci-fi aspects of it, and uh, the whole thing about the fact that um, people uh, exist in these chips, and so if you blow their bodies apart, put their chip in a new body, and they're still alive is, is a nice way to get around, um, you know, there are a lot of uh, action stories where people get killed and it's like, oh well, they're gone. And sometimes people have to go through crazy, sort of unbelievable things in order to keep that from happening. And so here, no, I just blew you away. Oh, you're back! <laughs> you know, you know. So um, that's one of the interesting things about it. Uh, it's certainly uh, reminiscent of game culture, where it's like, oh no, I you're that's dead. respawn. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so I, I mentioned to him that uh, you know people are critical of uh, the Matrix, where all the you know the the band of uh, do-gooders are killing everyone around them because it could change them into people who could kill them. So better to kill them um, here. You know, you kill somebody, but the, in theory they could right. Be the, back. It, the idea, um, the value of uh, physical the physical body is diminished. Quite a bit, it seems like. In this. It diminished, but one thing you haven't seen is is a culture that uh, you know doesn't is it rejects that. So sure. Now we did see a little bit of it. So there's a protest going on. Ah, uh, yes. And we get the idea that if you are a sleeve, that you somehow you're going to hell, or you're. Uh, there are people who don't feel like that's a good thing, so they don't want it. They have the, like the Day of the Dead masks on, um, and they are. Uh, uh, yeah, they're opposed to this whole the notion of sleep. And also, I think they've uh, made mention of the fact that um, uh, in this episode, I assume, but certainly later, it's like um, if you ever get killed, um, you know, you can be re-sleeved at no cost, so they can say, "Oh, here's the guy that killed me." Oh, thank you very much. Um, but there are some people who don't believe in that, so. You know, they, they so even if you be, did that, you'd still be going to hell. Yep, in other words, even still, if you, even well, if they brought you back for the sole purpose of identifying yeah, your killer. Right. So that's why it's like you could, you would encode the chip. So it was oh, we can't bring him back. He doesn't believe in that. And it's all about. Uh, I mean, uh, all about one of the main themes is uh, caste. 
yes. systems. Yes. You know, so you've got the up, upper class living in the clouds, that literally. Are so rich that they can have clones of themselves made. And then you've got this situation. You see this thing of like this poorer family. I assume. Yes. Uh, their seven year old daughter died, and so it's car like, accident. You so get a here's your free. Uh, body and it's like this old woman 70 year old woman and so yeah. she's a 70 year old woman with a 7 year old's mind yes and so the, the parents, and the parents are like, are like what the hell is I, this how do we I don't like go buy another body if you want to get a yeah. better body that's their solution good luck <laughs> out of the expensive. out flee scram um, so there is that sense of you know obviously money uh, which is why the whole of the privileges what the Meth- Meth- Methuselah thing is supposed to mean because uh, these people who are so rich that they can live forever, you know, and, and live any life they want, you know, that they can start to believe that they're gods. Well, also, interestingly, the so the opening credits show uh, a caduceus, uh, the two snakes, and the um, which they mention in the episode, uh, oh, you know, the sleeving is like a, sh- a snake shedding its skin. Uh-huh. Um, and I actually wrongfully thought that that was... The symbol for the uh, you know, like medical association. It's not actually. It's it's a, a mistaken thing. That's just a single snake, but it's the it's it's Hermes' symbol, um, and it does have. It's associated with with well Hermes and, and Mercury, but it's also associated with healing and um, being able to wake people from sleep, slumber, that kind of thing. So there's a anyway. There's a sense. The power to do what they're doing, I think, is enveloped in the mythical idea of the Caduceus. Mm-hmm. Um, so mm-hmm. it's kind of an interesting uh, symbology there that they're using. Um, one small note that uh, it caught my ear, and I was like, "Oh, is this a thing?" And I don't, I, I don't <laughs> think it's a thing, but it would be cool if it was. So this is uh, Kovac beginning. He's he's about to be killed off by the Hit Squad <laughs> from 250 years ago. And they're like, they're, but they want to question him first. They're trying to figure out where this falconer is. So like, where's your leader? And he's kind of he has a wise ass response, but he's like, leader? I thought we were an autonomous collective. <laughs> and then when he said that line, I was like, <laughs> it's like the only other time I've ever heard that line, ever, <laughs> in movies, TV, or life, was in My Python and the Holy Grail. It's the only time. I was like, I was like I didn't know we had a king. I thought we were an autonomous collective. Oh, no, you're living in the fantasy world, well, you are. <laughs> we're in a dictatorship. <laughs> so, anyway, the fact that this guy, it seems like, because he's being wise assy as well, like he's quoting Monty Python <laughs> on a, some distant planet in the distant future. That's pretty cool. I was like, wait, does that mean this guy like knows Monty Python and he's going to like riff on Monty Python a lot? Uh, <laughs> not that I like Monty Python. I love Monty Python. Anyway, um, he didn't. Of course, the word Python, maybe that's the Caduceus. <laughs> All right, no. All right, so um, did, why he threw out a Monty Python reference seemed odd. It seemed a little anachronistic to me, but um, because well, I love that movie so much, I'm like, oh, yay! Yes. But uh, a little odd. It's you not know, like they created the concept. Uh, it's autonomous collective. Cor- agreed. So maybe it's a complete coincidence, but it's just the, at the time he said it, the yeah. way he said it. Oh, no, it, I it's, thought of that too. It was like, I, but I wasn't thinking. Oh, is he? Is that, <laughs> is that his thing? Is he? <laughs> nothing like getting killed, saying money by saying money by lines. <laughs> no one expects the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> <laughs> ah. um, so that was uh, interesting. So okay, so this is if I had. I mean, obviously, there was a, it was like an info dump. There was a lot yep, of information lot going of on in this episode. Maybe maybe a little too much. I mean, considering... It's what I would expect if this was a two-hour movie. you gotta, you got to throw out the stuff quick until you get... But in this case, you know, you've got ten hours to tell the story. Maybe you, maybe you thread it through a little... You keep people in suspense or a little bit mysterious for a while. There's still plenty to learn. There's still plenty to learn, okay. <laughs> no, I know everything now. Okay, so... <laughs> Anyway, so that was it. Was a little much to take in. I mean, I found myself kind of like, ah, maybe I should rewind. And, uh, I'll just keep going. Anyway, so, um, but it was still very effective. Actually, it was, I, I heard it was directed by Mikhail, uh, Miguel Sapachnik. Uh, directed all of the best Game of Thrones episodes. Mm. And he also directed, I believe, some episodes in the first season of True Detective. Anyway, mm. he's kind of one of. He's the director, but he's not the uh, creator, though. So. Correct. But I'm just saying, he's, uh, you know. Oh, maybe he is. Oh, look at that. He's like, bang. Good, good director. <laughs> and it's uh, it's polished. It's, uh, it's got a lot of production value. Uh, one question I had was, 
so Kovac, he's been asleep yeah. in, in a bag for, or I don't know, they put his stack in a, a stack. box or yeah. something. Yeah, right. Uh, for like 250 years. Yes. And then he wakes up. I felt like he was a little too sure of himself in this world. Like, I'm trying to think of like... like oh, for, one thing I've got, they said that he is designed to adapt to wherever he is. Ah, so that okay. is a, a an aspect of, you know, he's always learning, you know, what's, what's around him. So um, there is a character reason why he would not be out of place. Okay. Uh, and because it's just like, like just think it, about think about this too because it's like okay I'm gonna take this guy who's been asleep for 250 years to solve my murder um, so yeah you go around and learn about everything and he's like I'm just trying to figure this all this stuff out <laughs> I'll get to you later <laughs> you want somebody who can learn fairly quickly you do so you do but it's, it's just like like it's the equivalent. An unusual choice of that you would choose someone like that except that he's supposed to be someone who can adapt quickly. Agreed. Agreed. That's just, I'm just saying, you know, it did seem that's like the character reason for <laughs> okay, because like you know, he died 250 years ago on another planet. So that's those are two very you know that's a, it. It's would be a it would be odd. You'd almost expect there would be almost nothing culturally recognizable for him to come to 250 years later on another planet to be like, oh right, I know that. This is that caste system. Oh yeah. Oh the sleeves. Got it. I don't. Like, yeah. Well, you know. the other planet. That I that you will see is not like it's some dramatically different culture. Okay, but so maybe it should be or no? Yeah, I mean, is it okay? No, well, I mean, you would think that, but uh, it's not like it's a developed city or anything. The other areas, I, I think they're gotcha. they're they're more like an extension of it. So it's like you know, one of the things I've read, and I'm not sure how accurate it is. Maybe it's in more emphasizing the original work is that. A reason why they developed this system is to deal with longer journeys. So we started here, and it's boy, you, you can go on close to light speed. It's still going to take a fucking long time to get to another planet that's habitable. Um, so if you just put yourself in a stack, you right. can then doop, hey, and when you get there, right? So it's you know, so they uh, the world that we've seen they need a spore drive is what they probably need. Aren't okay. you know they're they're just not radically different than the world that we've that we've come from. Gotcha. So, I'm just thinking, like, so just. But you no, know, it, it's an and, interesting point. But I think more they're trying to embellish the fact that for rich people, things change a lot less than you know. And actually, well, they don't want the it societies to are stagnant. They're kind of stagnant, yeah. I will except for technologically, but in terms of the caste system, and you know, it's probably like new, fancy things for people to explore. To you know, maybe superficial things, but. You know, the actual culture and how things are set up is fairly stagnant, which is, you know, I think a, a reason why you could say that uh, people want to rebel. I'm thinking in terms of, speaking of rebellions, so, uh, you know, 250 years for us would be, like, the American Revolution. Like, that's how we, if we were put on ice back then, yes. and then we were brought back 250 years later, it would be right. like, where's my musket? Right. Where's my trusty horse? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what is this giant box in front of me with pictures on it? Um, uh, they don't have that problem no. in this, uh, no. this world. They, no, no, no. Apparently technology hit a certain level and we're like, that's enough. That's fine. We'll make, you know, sleeves good. Yeah. These will be great for the next 250 years. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, So that was just a little bit of like, I'd almost rather him be, since he is the portal, our portal into this world, Maybe if he's a little no. more unsure of himself. <laughs> he's like, no, I got this. I, oh, the drug guy? Yeah, I know. Oh, and you do this with the thing? Got it. Okay, yeah. Yeah, whatever. Like, he's... Yeah, he's got it. He, he knows how to... Oh, the cab? Doing. I know. I just sit... Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. okay. Yep, sitting in the cab. Yeah. <laughs> Something never changed. <laughs> the pink unicorn. He had like a pink unicorn backpack as well. Yeah. I can't remember what that's about. Which I was like... They still have backpacks? I don't know. Like, <laughs> is that the perfect technology? Is, is the backpack the perfect technology that it would never improve for the next millennia? He's retro. He's a retro. <laughs> I don't know. I'm like, you know. I wanted to see space backpack. I don't know. <laughs> uh, all right. Anyway. No, that's the thing. All right. So, good. Show is good. It is a lot of information. It is sci-fi as hell. Mm -hmm. It's an R, hard R. Yep. Um... Uh, I thought I had some other th points, but those are the main ones. Um, oh, well, there are more episodes. So. 
yeah, I'm also episode two. Uh, we'll be talking about uh, next week. Mm. We'll also be talking about counterpart, and of course, we're going to be talking about oh, yes. uh, Black Panther. Black Panther. Uh, so uh, all those things and more. Probably I'm also at some point going to link back with Brian O'Connor to get his uh, overall take about the entire yeah. Star Trek Discovery season. So we'll talk about that. Uh, any other last points there? Uh, no, 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 all right. No, no, no. Altered Carbon, everyone. Yes. Check it out. All right. Uh, subscribe if you want to get updates. That's the thing. Make comments and we'll comment back. That's right. Yay. Yay. Bye, everybody. Bye.